It's no secret that the Devil May Cry series has a wide array of techniques to learn, and the first entry is no different. While there's no shortage of information and tutorials available in regard to the later games, DMC1 resources are not as easily found. The purpose of this video is to compile the most useful advanced techniques and detail what they are, how they work, and what situations they can be applied in. There will be some overlap with the techniques shown here, as a few are also present in later titles. This video, however, was made with players who are starting the series with DMC1 in mind. Let's start off with the most well-known and useful cancel in the game, Slash Canceling. While performing a combo with any of the swords, you may notice that it takes Dante a few seconds to sheath his sword before he can attack again. Slash cancels allow you to skip this animation entirely, giving you access to an unending chain of attacks that can stun many enemies in the game. There are two known ways to perform a slash cancel. The first method involves canceling your combo by forcing Dante to move after he swings his sword. This can be accomplished in a few ways, moving your analog stick from left to right, doing a complete circle, or by doing a half circle motion. What's important to keep in mind in regard to the half circle method is that you need to make sure you're ending your input by stopping once you reach up on the analog stick. If you're familiar with fighting games, you can think of the half circle method as doing a tiger knee input. The second way of performing slash cancels requires you to cancel a combo by inputting the command for shoot once Dante has nearly finished swinging his sword. There are a few differences with this method than with canceling by movement, and the first difference is in the timing. You can input analog movements earlier in a combo, not requiring Dante to finish swinging his sword, whereas canceling with shooting requires Dante to be nearly finished with his swing, or else it won't work at all. This is because when you cancel an attack by inputting shoot, Dante doesn't actually fire his guns. Instead, he cancels into the lock-on animation, which then allows you to cancel into another attack. Even though this method is a little more demanding timing-wise, it has a few benefits too. The first is that it isn't nearly as execution intensive. Completing a slash cancel once or twice is good but you need to be able to do it consistently without fail once you're in combat, and that's where using the analog method can be tiring after a while. As far as where you can apply slash canceling throughout the game, it's particularly effective against puppets, hunters, and Milo Angelo. While this technique will allow you to stun them, keep in mind that most grounded enemies will eventually block your attacks and attempt to counterattack you after a certain number of hits. When that happens, you should dodge roll or jump out of the way and against some enemies, you can even parry their counterattack by attacking again. Slash cancels are strong, but they aren't infallible. In many cases, using Ifrit will be the better choice, especially against frosts or plasmas. Be certain to adjust your strategies to the enemies you're fighting. Through obtaining the grenade gun near the end of Mission 8, you'll be able to learn one of the most versatile techniques in the game, grenade rolling. The grenade gun is a powerful weapon that deals good damage, pushes enemies away from you, and significantly restores your devil trigger runes upon each successful shot. To offset this, however, it has a very long recoil and reload animation. You can eliminate this animation entirely by inputting a dodge roll immediately after firing, canceling the reload animation with a roll. You are then free to reposition or fire another grenade. This technique allows you to generate Devil Trigger runes quickly, while also inflicting high damage. Another small benefit of roll cancelling comes from each gun having a charged shot. By holding down the shoot button, you can produce stronger bullets for a short period of time, and this is also true for the grenade gun. Normally, you would only have enough time to fire one charged grenade because of the long recoil animation, but through roll cancelling, you can fire two. The only real downside to this technique is that, similarly to slash cancelling, it can be hindered by the camera. Unlike slash cancels though, there's no alternate way to circumvent being knowledgeable on when the camera is going to change angles. If the camera does change angles just as you input a roll, you may get a jump cancel instead. While this does cancel the recoil animation, you can't fire grenades while airborne, so jump cancelling isn't as effective as rolling. Overall. Grenade rolling is a very practical technique, both for its devil trigger regeneration and because most grounded enemies outside of bosses don't have a good defense against its constant barrage of explosions.
Obtained from a breakable desk in the library on Mission 2, the shotgun is a decent sidearm that is slightly held back by its limited range and lengthy reload time. Like the grenade gun, though, you can cut down the reload time with a technique called shotgun twitching. A shotgun twitch is performed by moving the analog stick in any direction immediately after firing the gun. If done correctly, the reload animation will be cancelled by Dante walking, allowing you to quickly fire the shotgun again. If you're already walking while firing the shotgun, be sure to move the analog stick in a different direction in order to properly register the cancel. Through use of shotgun twitching, the shotgun's fire rate increases greatly. This makes it especially useful against enemies like the Sargasso, Sin Scythes, Sin Scissors, and even the final form of Mundus. Outside of only being useful against the aforementioned enemies, shotgun twitching has no real weaknesses. Combine that with its ease of use and it becomes an essential technique to learn. Finally, we reach a mainstay of the series, jump cancelling. Unlike the other techniques mentioned so far, jump cancels are actually an intended mechanic and referenced in the skills menu. A jump cancel is done by launching an enemy into the air with high time, following up with an attack that keeps you in the air such as shooting, and then pressing the X button before you land to jump off the enemy, keeping you in the air. Normally, that's where the fun would end. However, jump canceling really starts to shine once you buy the air hike skill. With air hike equipped, there's no longer a limit to the amount of jump cancels you can do. The only thing stopping you at this point is finding ways to keep the enemy in the air. While its practical usage is limited by the fact that there are only a small number of jump cancelable moves, you can still do a few things with this technique. The most practical of which is something called shotgun hiking. By launching a puppet type enemy into the air with high time, you can then use a shotgun blast to blow them higher into the air. From there, you can jump cancel the shotgun blast and then repeat the jump cancel shotgun blast loop until they're defeated. This tactic is unbeatable, even on higher difficulties like Dante Must Die. When puppet enemies are sent airborne, they can't retaliate until they reach the ground again. Because they never touch the ground though, they have no way of escaping shotgun hiking. Unfortunately, Puppets are the only enemies that, when hit airborne, are sent higher in the air when using a move that would normally knock them down. This means that the shotgun hike will only work on puppet type enemies. There's also a variation of shotgun hiking that involves using Alistair's Devil Trigger skill, Vortex. Depending on which version of Vortex you've purchased, you can perform it in different ways. Vortex cancelling is much easier if you only have the first version unlocked. Start by launching a puppet enemy while you're in Devil Trigger form, and then juggle them by shooting. Once juggled, press triangle while holding any direction to activate Vortex. Since this is the level 1 version, Vortex will end after completing its attack, leaving you in a falling animation. When this happens, continue juggling them with your guns. Because shooting keeps you airborne, you can follow up with Vortex again and keep looping this until the puppet is dead. If you've purchased the second level of Vortex though, this process will be a little different. Level 2 Vortex will make Dante spin until you let go of the button. When you do let go, Dante will instead remain in his Devil Trigger flight mode. Now that we no longer have a built-in cancel, we'll have to make our own. To create a similar cancel effect, you'll need to very quickly end and reactivate Devil Trigger after you've hit the enemy with Vortex and then fire your guns. Since you've activated Devil Trigger already, you can do Vortex again and repeat the process. The timing can be difficult to pull off in quick succession, but once you have it down, you'll be able to deal even more damage than the shotgun height. The only drawback to this is that both versions of Vortex cancelling consume Devil Trigger very quickly. You will either need a maxed out DT gauge, or have Super Dante unlocked to consistently take advantage of this technique. While it may not see much practical use because of the Devil Trigger requirement, it can save you a lot of time on Dante Must Die playthroughs, and is one of the most stylish combos you can pull off in the game by far. That's all we've got for this video, folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this from Monarch, and if you want to hear even more work from me, I recommend you check out Project Wingman. It's an Ace Combat-like action flight game that just released on December 1st, and I play AWACS Galaxy, so I'll be the voice in your ear for the whole game. Until next time, everybody, have a good one.